Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. It's been a little while since I've done tutorials on some of the radios, and if you've been waiting for more on the IC705, well, buckle up, because today we're going to take a look at the Spectrum display. And this is going to be more than one part, because there's a lot to cover. In fact, this video is a little bit longer than I normally like to make them, but I have included chapter markers, so you can go right to a particular item if you don't want to sit through the whole video. One other side note, on the LED RFI video, for those of you that are regular viewers, I got a fair number of comments, and I've been doing some more experimenting, so there's going to be a follow-up coming on that. So stay tuned for that. For now, though, let's go take a look at the 705 and how the Spectrum display works. Here we have a freshly reset 705 so that all of the scope functions will be the way they are at the defaults when the radio is powered up for the first time. You have no scope as the default when you first turn it on. We're going to press the M.scope button and then I'm going to press and hold it, which will move the scope to the bottom and give you the soft keys for the scope. And then I'm going to press the expand set soft key on the screen, and if you just touch it briefly, that is expand the scope so that it's, the scope is larger and it shrinks down the numbers so you can see more of it. When the scope first comes up by default, it comes up in what's called center mode, Center mode is whatever frequency you see on the display is at the center of the scope. So if I start tuning, you'll see the signals move left to right. And of course, here's our, here's our old friend uh, FT8 signals here. Everything that you see is moving around the center. The other thing that you'll notice, and let me move this back over this way a little bit, You'll see when the signal stops here, you still see a gray shadow, and that's called max hold, where it remembers the maximum signal. And you see a little bit of a gray. There was just a little uh, static crash, and you see that there, there's a gray bar on there where the maximum signals were. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this into fixed mode. So this is only showing... 25 kilohertz below and above our center line right now. I'm going to put it in fixed and it's going to show the entire 20 meter band in this case because that's what we're on right now. And now in fixed mode, the scope remains fixed and then you see this little green line here that moves as I tune. So that shows us where we're tuned. And again, you can see the peak hold feature on here. Whoop, we'll talk about what I just did in a second there. Well, actually, let's talk about that right now. So I'm way tuned way over here in the middle of the band, and I see a signal up here that I'm interested in. If I just tap on the scope there, it zooms in. If I tap on the zoomed in part, it instantly tunes up there. Now it's not quite exact, but pretty close. So um, that's a really convenient way of tuning with the scope. So if I have a signal down here that I want to see, and then I touch where it's zoomed in. We can. Oh, the strong one went away. There he is. And of course, we're on sideband, not CW, so we're not ideally set up. So it's really nice to be able to tune around very quickly using the scope just by touching on it. It gives you the zoomed in area, and then you can touch a little closer. If you don't want to tune, you just hit exit and it'll go back to the regular scope. So that's some of the nice features about the scope. Now when we're in fixed mode, some other indications that you get on the scope here is it tells you the frequency at the bottom end, the frequency at the top end, and then here it says grid 25k 10 dB. So the horizon or the excuse me the vertical lines are 25 kilohertz apart. 
and the horizontal lines here are 10 dB apart that you see. So each, each horizontal line represents another 10 dB in signal strength. That's the basics of what the scope is in fixed mode. Let's go back to center mode. And in center mode, we've got, uh, again, it tells you the grid. So now the grid is 5 kilohertz. Each grid is 5 kilohertz. And at the top and the bottom, it says plus 25K and minus 25K. So it's 25 kilohertz above and 25 below. So the scope is now showing a span of 50 kilohertz. And on the bottom here, there's a legend that shows you plus 5, plus 10, plus so on. So you can see approximately how far something away is if you want to tune to it quickly. Now for the span, when you're in center mode, you can adjust the span by just touching the span button. And it jumped up now to plus and minus 50 kilohertz, plus and minus 100, plus and minus 250, plus and minus 500. That's as large as it goes. The, the biggest swath that you can see on the scope is a one megahertz wide swath. And then if I touch span again, it'll go to the minimum, which is plus and minus two and a half kilohertz, which is basically really pretty much one sideband signal here. If we can, uh, so. Now you notice the signal is on both sides of this center line, and we're going to talk about that in a minute with some of the settings here. So let me bump the span up just a little bit, plus and minus 5 kilohertz. Still, it's not much more than one signal. If we go to plus and minus 10, now we can see a couple signals nearby. So here's... And we can see static crashes. We'll go back to the fixed mode and look at the look at the entire band. Now, one of the other things when you're looking in fixed mode, the span button here you'll see is replaced with edge, and this sets what edges there are. There are several choices on each band, so the first choice on 20 meters is the entire band, 14.0 to 14.350. If I press edge again. Now it's just 0 to 100, uh, 14.1, so basically the CW portion, or CW and data portion. If I press edge again, now it's 100 to 350, so basically the voice, the voice portion. And then now 0 to 50, which is just the CW portion. And you'll notice I'm up here on 220, and I'm not anywhere on this, uh, this part of the scope. If you look on the right here, you'll see two green arrows pointing that way. That's telling you that where the line should be that shows what I'm receiving is off the screen to the right. And I can still use the touch tune feature, and if I just touch, now that'll bring me right down here, and we can listen to the signals down here. But if you see arrows on the right or the left, it will show you what direction it is relative to the scope. There's also another feature in fixed mode that's called scroll, and again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So if we touch edge one more time, that should take us back to 0 to 350. And pretty much the default edges are set up for each band to be the entire band, and then kind of the data portion and the voice portion, and then just the CW portion. That's pretty much how they're set up for all the bands by default. You can go in and create custom edges if you want to have a particular portion of the band that you work or you're interested in or, you know, maybe for a contest or whatever. Uh, and then one other button here on the front is hold. And if I touch that, it does what you would think. It just freezes the scope where it is. That's the basics of how you use the scope. Now, let's take a look at some of the settings that you can change because, frankly, 
I don't like all of the default settings. I mean, they have their place, and this is really very much a personal preference thing. Some of you may love it this way, and others may not. In order to change the settings on the scope, we are going to press and hold the expand set button. So if we press and hold that, that takes us into the scope settings. The uh, first setting on the top, we'll kind of go through these in order. Scope during transmit, center type and that's set to on, that's the default. What that means is, what is the scope going to do while I'm transmitting? And that's only in center mode. And let me get to a, a legal part of the band here. It's pretty late in the evening as I'm recording this. WA2 IVD testing. And you'll notice that as I press the microphone button, WA2 IVD testing, it just freezes and when you are in fixed mode that's the only option if I go to center mode where I'm looking where the center of the scope is whatever frequency I'm on WA2 IVD testing now you'll see that it actually shows my voice and the scope keeps running there so let's go back to the setting here if we turn this setting to off then when we're in center mode WA2 IVD testing, the scope just freezes like it does in fixed mode. Whoops, didn't mean to shrink it. So I'm going to turn that back on. I like it on. I think it's a useful thing to have. Next we'll take a look at this max hold. So again, the default is 10 second hold. So if we go back and we look at the uh, if we look at the screen where we can actually see some more stuff, so when you see, you know, a big signal peak up here, you'll see those gray bars remain. They remain for about 10 seconds, and then you'll see them kind of slowly fade down off of the screen. So it's a nice thing if you're on a fairly quiet band or there's not much going on and you want to make sure you don't, you know, something happens up above and you glance away and you want to make sure you didn't miss a signal if you're trying to find signals this can be kind of nice. And then if we go in here, the other option is on. And if you leave it on, then the, the gray bars from maximum signal peaks just stay there indefinitely. But I'll be honest, I actually prefer it off for most of the time. I find the, the gray bars in the background a little bit distracting for me. Again, personal preference thing. Your mileage may vary. However you like it, that's the beauty of this. You can set it up the way you want. The next one, center type display. And again, this is another one I really don't care for the default setting. So the default is filter center. And let's look at what that means. Let me get to a signal here. And then if we go to center mode, very very popular uh, uh, in the uh, in the area <clears throat> uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of well so you'll notice here where the center white line is the audio is on both sides of this now we're on filter 2 here um, and if i press and hold this this is a 3 kilohertz wide filter 1500 is the center of the filter, so this line is basically centered 15 kilohertz above the, uh, let me exit that, uh, I'm sorry, 1.5 kilohertz above the carrier frequency, so it's kind of centered in the center of where the audio is. And there are some use cases where that's nice, and I'll show you that in a little while here, but I'm going to set this to where I like it, and there's carrier center point. I'll just show you that quickly. Now you notice all of his audio is on the right side. Ooh, he's bleeding over a little. Um, let's try another one here if we can show a difference. And of course he stopped talking. Um, well, the key point is, there we go. So here you can see all of the audio was to the right of the line. 
and that's because we are on upper sideband, so the audio should be on the upper side of the carrier. So this white line now is the carrier frequency. And when I set it to carrier center, you notice on the bottom it still says 0, plus 2, plus 4, and so on. Let me go to the other setting that I kind of like, and that is carrier point center absolute frequency. And if we set it to that, now on the bottom of the screen, the legend actually shows the actual carrier frequencies. So like if I see something over here, I can say, oh, I got to tune up to 282 or, you know, whatever span you're set to. So let's actually make our span one bit bigger. This always happens to me in videos. I tune to a signal and they immediately stop talking. <laughs> so again, you see he's above it. Now, just to illustrate this, let's go to 40 meters. And uh, let's see, uh, where are we here on 40 meters? We'll get somebody talking up here. And there's a lot of noise here. Let me try to make this a little bit easier to see. I'm going to turn on the attenuator. And that kind of makes it a little too small, but now you can see his audio is to the left of this white line and that's because we're now on lower sideband. At any rate, again, personal preference item. I like seeing where the carrier actually is. Um, and then marker position, oddly enough, so marker position fix type, scroll type, is set to carrier point as opposed to filter center by default. So it's the opposite of what the center type is, and let me just show you what that means. If we go back to fix mode, it says this green line, is it the carrier frequency or is it the filter center? And honestly, when you're looking at the whole band, it doesn't really matter much, but if you're down here in the, in the CW portion and you have the edge set to just, you know, 50 kilohertz. Um, let's go to CW. And if, so for CW, I want to tune right on top of that. And if I'm on sideband, I need to be a little bit away from it because it's trying to it's not generating a side tone for sideband, so if I want to hear it at, if I want to hear a 600 hertz tone, I need to be 600 hertz away. Uh, again, for the fixed mode, it probably doesn't uh, matter that much because in fixed mode, you're not going to, especially when you're looking at the whole band, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference between the carrier and the filter frequency. In that one I like the default. The next one here, this is video bandwidth. That's what it's called in the manual. The default is narrow. Your choices are narrow and wide. And I don't really know what they mean by video bandwidth to tell you the truth. And it doesn't explain it well in the manual. But let me just show you what the effect is. So. If you notice here, any signals, especially CW or narrow signals, are pretty narrow vertical lines. If we change the video bandwidth to wide, everything kind of gets, I'll call it blurry. Um, it, makes the, it makes the width of a signal on the scope pretty wide. I guess with that, that's what they mean by bandwidth, but I mean it's I don't know. That's not the bandwidth of the actual signal. It just makes it look that way. So I think they should really call it, do you want it fuzzy or not? I can't think of a good reason why you would not want that in narrow. 
it defaults to narrow. I like it in narrow. The display is much crisper. You can see much better between signals. I mean, if you had two really close CW signals and you had that set to wide, you probably wouldn't see the difference. You, you wouldn't be able to see that there were two signals. In my opinion, that's not a very useful setting. If you like the looks of it a little bit wider, well, again, personal preference. Next choice here is averaging. Averaging is defaulted to off, and it's what you would think it is, is does it average multiple sweeps? If I set averaging to four, which is the highest option, and we go back, oops, let me expand that. You notice everything kind of gets a little bit slower movement. It's, it's basically averaging four samples together before it displays it on the scope. So everything is sort of a little bit more in slow motion. And that's really all there is to that. If you want a little bit more smooth looking display, if I set averaging to two, you can see it's more responsive now, but things are a little more smooth movements, I guess. I'm fine with it off, but if you like the look of it, then you might, uh, maybe you want to set that on or set it to two or three or four and see how you like it. Now before I go to some of the other settings, let's take a look at the second page. You'll notice on the left here there's this little one. There's two pages of controls for the uh, spectrum scope. So if I go to page two, <coughs> there is reference, speed, and marker. I'm going to jump to the middle and we'll do speed first. One of the other indicators on the screen here in the legend, you'll see three little arrows up here at the top of the screen. That's the speed that the scope is scrolling by. The default is fast, which is three arrows, and if I hit the speed button, it just you'll see it starts kind of indexing down a little bit slower. If I hit it again, it goes to slow, and you see just one arrow, and now it's kind of chunking along. It's actually a much more jittery movement, but if you want to not miss something going off the bottom of the screen, or, you know, activity's not happening fast enough that you're worried about it, you can uh, change it, and you just keep pressing it, and it keeps rotating between 1, 2, and 3. I kind of like the speed 3, especially with the scope expanded. Maybe if you had it smaller, you might want it a little slower. Uh, the next one here on the left is ref, which is the reference level, and the default is 0 dB, and this just, as I turn it down, I need a much, much stronger signal to have it show up on the scope, and as I turn it up, it just makes, you know, the, the whatever, whatever, so I've got an S4 background level here, you know, if I turn this up, my background level is much more pronounced on the scope. This is just, you know, depending on how much noise you have, you can adjust this level. And in fact, if we go um, back down to 40 meters, let me turn off the attenuators. I've got a, well, that's a signal. Let's see what I have for, yeah, pretty busy tonight. And I've got a S7 to S9 static noise here tonight, so I might want to, turn my reference level down so that signals stand out a little bit better. And then of course if you just uh, press and hold default it goes back to zero. So that's the reference level. Marker turns the transmit marker on and off. <coughs> now, so you notice a, a little brown T showed up here and these little brown dashes showed up in between the green. And that's to show you your transmit frequency in the event that it's different from your receive frequency. Now most of the time it's going to be the same, but um, let, me, let me go down to the bottom part of the band here and let's go back to the other screen. Okay, so now we're looking from 7 to 7.030, basically the CW portion. And if I, oh, I got my transmit marker turned on, and if I turn on my RIT, 
now you'll see I'm moving my receiver interactive tuning so I'm changing my receive frequency but it's telling me when I transmit it's going to transmit where that brown line is. You can turn that extra marker on and off if you don't want to see it. That's just to help remind you that your transmit and receive frequencies are different and of course if you're running split again you would see the same thing you'd see your transmit and receive frequencies. Kind of a handy thing. Oh man, that's almost 28 minutes. Okay, I think it's time to end this, so we're going to stop this. Well, that was a bit of an abrupt ending. Sorry about that, but I didn't realize how long I'd been running already. Anyway, we'll check out more of the Spectrum Scope in the next part. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on that like button. And if you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. And also hit the bell icon and you'll get notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.